so everybody is generally met with a massive surprise when they are working a nine to five job in a career and then they they bounce out and start doing their own thing. And, and I experienced it, a lot of design business owners do as well. What you get comfortable doing in a nine to five job is nowhere near the job description when you go out and do your own thing. So take us through like, what your expectation was around what you would be doing and how you're investing your time um, when you started versus yeah. what was actually required yeah. of you yeah. in order to win. Yeah, I mean, similar to probably a lot of your listeners, we were all product guys, as I described. Uh, I had a, we had a CTO, two project managers, a product guy. Um, and we were used to working in an organization with that very finite lens, I guess we, we obviously worked, you know, with the rest of the business, but we weren't running the business. We weren't running finance and accounting. We weren't running marketing. So we didn't have a lot of that experience. Um, and that showed up very, very early on in, in what we were trying to do. And, um, I think we, our solution to that was to do what we knew how to do, which was build more product. So if we weren't getting traction on a product or a software release, well, we'd build new features or we'd build an additional product that we thought the, the customers might like. Um, and obviously that's the most expensive thing you can do in a software business <laughs> because you need designers and developers and testers to, to get that whole process moving and, and the, the amount of time it takes to actually deliver that. So we very quickly had to um, adapt to the commercial side of the business. I was very lucky to have um, one, a CTO, but also a great um, founder from a product and project management perspective. And he and I really sort of grew through that journey from the commercial aspects and really having to learn and understand how to drive a business commercially. And that if we didn't, we were gonna run, run out of money if we didn't find a way to make this business a commercial success, which is the DNA of any company really, we had a vision, we were good at product, but if we didn't really understand how to drive it commercially and make sales, our choices got smaller and smaller as that journey went on. We were running out of money. If you're running out of money and you're not making, uh, any, uh, if you're running out of the investment capital that you've raised and you're not making any cash, it gets harder and harder to go out and raise a second round, right? So. Um, and lucky for us, our investors drip fed us the money. They didn't give us it all in the bank mm. in, in one go. And in hindsight, that's not what we wanted at the time, obviously, but in hindsight, keeping us on a tight, really tight shoestring mm. uh, financially um, really, really helped us to, you know, manage the, the resources and the time and the efforts that we were, we were um, putting into growing the business. Uh, but also to to think forwards and really understand that if we didn't drive revenue into this company, all of the subsequent um, choices became much harder. Mm. So very early on, we got that kind of rude awakening. And in this journey, we made all of the mistakes. Like we, we ran out of money at one point. We couldn't pay employees at one point. Um, you know, w we approached everything by trying to build products until we started to really understand that we needed to be able to sell these the, our software solutions. Mm. Um, so we made a lot of mistakes and we learned a huge amount from that. And, and actually we both both grew over that period into, into pretty good commercial and business people. Um, but we didn't understand sales. We had to learn it. We didn't understand marketing. We had to learn it. Um, we had to understand how to raise additional investment with investors, how to speak to investors, how to raise more cash uh, on the back of you know the, the story for the business, the product vision for the business, and the numbers we were delivering. And there was a there was a bit of a joke back then. They used to say, "Oh, it's it's harder to raise money, or it's, or it's easier to raise money pre-revenue." than it is when you're making a small amount of revenue. I can imagine. Right? Yeah, because you're yeah. going in front of an investor and they're like, mm, yeah. well, this, you've been He's doing this for six, 12 months. Dream. Yeah, it doesn't and look very... Like, yeah. It's a reality. <laughs> you're not getting any traction here. So, yeah. um, But I, I think for because, because of the way that the circumstances of the business were set up, we didn't get all our money up front, um, that kind of forced us to consider these things and take them seriously. 
And I think through that process, we really also understood responsibility for the first time in our lives, probably mm. full responsibility. Because in a, in a nine to five or a job, you know, you mess something up, there's teams there to, to kind of support you and clear up the mess or figure it out. But when you're running a company and you've got people relying on you in the business, you've got investors relying on you to deliver results, it's just you, mm. you know, as the leader in a company. And, and, and I think the sooner that you accept that, the, the more empowered you can become about it. And my phrase for that was, no one's coming to save you. Like, if you want this thing to happen, if you see this as a risk in your business, if you want to push in this direction, it's you. It's you and your team. It's you and your co-founders and your team. And no one's coming to save you. There's no exit door in this, you know, in terms of, you know, um, it's going to fix itself or, you know, if I don't do it, someone else is going to, going to, pick up the mantle and get it done. So mm. that, that turns you in, once you make that choice, I think, um, and life is all about next levels of responsibility, right? Running a business is one, having kids is something completely different, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but once you make that choice and you understand that, I think it's actually empowering because there's none of the, the victim stuff anymore. There's none of the excuses anymore. There's none of that stuff in mm. your head, which we all have, right? Mm. That just goes away because you're like, okay, I'm just fully reliant on myself and my, my team here to get this done.